once again i welcome you to another time of fellowship another time of studying the word of god and i want to assure you that this night will be a blessing to you as the lord makes his word known to you in a unique way let us pray lord we ask that once again you will come and guide us you will come and take us by the hand and you will uncover grant us disclosures that only you can bring to us in a time like this i cover everyone at the sound of my voice with the blood of jesus trusting that your hand will be strong upon our lives once again blessed be your name in jesus name we we'll pray i bring you a unique message this evening and it's titled understanding the territory um a lot of people who listen to us and a lot of people who tune into our channels are majorly those who are called into the ministry of intercession those who have a calling in this regard are those who um lend their time lend their uh, uh, wisdom intellect make sacrifices to stand for god in the place of prayer and to be relevant to god for the territory for the land you are welcome if you are there and you're listening to me what i want to assure you tonight is that you will understand the territory and you will grow to become a, a great functionary that the lord can be able to count on for kingdom exploits so i want you to turn to first corinthians chapter 16 verse 8 to 9 um it will be um, good for me to also tell you that we will take an example of a city to use as a case study for us to be able to drive this message home first corinthians chapter 16 verse 8 to 9 it says in verse 8 but i will tarry at ephesus until pentecost for a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries this is apostle paul um, to the letter he wrote to the Corinth, but he was actually referring to his ordeal in the city of ephesus we want to look at ephesus and use ephesus as um, a guide to understand our territories if you don't understand your territory as a watchman as an intercessor you will struggle you you will you will labor and come to little fruition so i want to give us a little picture in the drawing of the Bible for us to know how um, intercession works and how it affects our territory. Now what you need to understand is that Ephesus is a strategic territory. The word Ephesus means desirable and in many ways it was a desirable place to live. In fact in the ancient times um, Ephesus was an epitome of a thriving economy, a city filled with all manner of um, um, development and thriving economy it was actually a center of travel and commerce it was situated very wonderfully uh, between seas and, 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 and rivers and the city was one of the greatest seaports in the in the then ancient world apart from being desirable it was also accessible in fact um, um, history shows that three of the seven churches that Jesus mentioned in the book of Revelation was has a direct road linking to the city of Ephesus. One of them was Laodicea, one of them was Smyrna, um, one of them was um, 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 Babylon. Um, they had access to the city of Ephesus. So um, in, on Paul's second missionary journey, he visited Ephesus. And evidently he planted um, a church there. We can see that in Acts chapter 18, verse 19. On, four, on Paul's third missionary journey, Paul spent between two to three years teaching in the city. We can find that in Acts chapter 19, verse 8 to 10. He spent his time addressing false doctrines and pagan practices. This was actually the birth of the school of the Tyrannus, if you are a Bible student. It was, um, uh, Tyrannus was a rented school that Paul used for most of his teachings and and those teachings were so successful that that those who practiced magic brought their books according to the bible and burned them as an act of repentance we can see that in the book of acts chapter 19 verse 18 to 20 as the sale 
of idolatrous silver and images began to fall. The silversmiths, those who were in charge of this trade, caused an uproar. And that was um, a, a part of the a, a starting, um, a, a startup problem for Apostle Paul. So we can find that in Acts chapter 19, verse 26 to 41. So shortly after that um, dust of Paul left um, and settled for Macedonia, it was then he wrote this letter to the Corinthians. Now let's watch out something on this story that I just described now. Follow me. There are five patterns that we can be able to deduce from this story. Number one, labors in prayers and the word of God. That's the first thing we deduce. Number two, genuine conversions. Genuine, heartfelt conversions. Number three, restitution and consecrations. Number four, the effects of sin and idolatry drops. And number five, persecution. Now, this is the patterns that we saw in this story. Number one was that Paul began to labor in prayer and in the word. Number two, there were genuine conversions, which was an outfall of the word of God. Number three, uh, there were restitutions. People brought their magic acts. Their books were born. Number four, there, were, there was a drop in the effect of sin and idolatry. And number five, because of that, persecution came. Now, I want you to notice three things from this um, scripture that we read. And for you to understand your territory and how you labor there and the effect, the feedback you get in any, any territory. Number one is that you must know, know this. You may, you may need to write it down. That every move of God in the land starts by a direct effect of labors in the place of prayers and the word of God. There is nothing that God can do in a territory if there is no engagement of prayer and the word of God. So when people gather together and they begin to sow to themselves in righteousness, they begin to seek God and labor in prayer, what happens is that it bets a move of God. Paul started by teaching the word of God and then a revival broke out. Number two is that the darkness that we see in our territories, they are not so powerful. It always gives way to the light. The Bible says light shines in darkness. And the darkness cannot, they don't, it can't comprehend it. Hence, instead of magnifying the darkness in our territories and, you know, describing it and making it look so huge and, and, and instead of faith, people are in fear. What we need to do is to, is to spend time, invest time in the light bring people into the light bring them into messages like this let them understand uh, 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 the stories of the bible and how it affects them now invest in the light bring anointed word of god when you bring the light the darkness will surely give way you discover that paul did not need to confront those who were the master sellers of those materials and those who were actually propagating this evil all paul needed to do was to bring the sound word of God. Are you in a territory? And it's as if darkness have prevailed. Can we check what comes from the pulpit? Let's check the word, the quality of the word of God. And number three, the devil does not attack first. From the story of Paul, we discover that the devil does not attack first. Persecution is always a reaction. Persecution always a reaction. We saw that in Acts chapter 4. The Bible says they were threatened because they healed a man. And they threatened the disciples, the apostles, and said, don't perform a miracle in this name again. It was that time the apostles had to go and pray and say, Lord, grant boldness to your servants that they might declare the word of God without fear. So discover that persecution and the attack of the devil is always a reactionary. And if that is the case, we must not respond reactionary. We must always be the one to have the first foot. We must always be proactive. The body of Christ should be proactive. We are meant to be pace setters. We are not meant to be reactive. So we should always be the one setting the pace in the territory. If you are prayerful in your territory, your prayer should be what should set the pace. And the devil will want to. So we expect feedbacks after prayers. So if you're afraid of feedbacks, <laughs> you, 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 you signed up to the wrong um, 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 walk. So we expect feedbacks, but we stand guarded and strong in faith. 
Now, one major thing about the church in Ephesus was that it was deep in idolatry and pagan worship. Now, listen to me. This is where I want us to build into understanding what happened to Paul and why suddenly he made the statement in the text that I read to you. Ephesus was deep in idolatry and pagan worship. And, and, and this was because of the location where the city was situated. And because it was Satan's stronghold, many of you do not know that Ephesus was a strong, uh, a satanic stronghold. Because it was Satan's stronghold because of the roots, trade roots, pagan practices, evil and demonic activity in the land. What happened was that the devil raised a, 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 a feedback, an attack against Apostle Paul. So he made it difficult for Paul to penetrate, even though he had a great door open to him there. Hence, if you don't understand the territorial background of Ephesus as a city, you won't understand why the statement that Paul used when he said, a great and effectual door is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. Are you laboring in a territory as a young man? And it's as if everything you do, there are there are there are short short shutting in. There, there's a pushback. There is a fight. It's as if uh, you, you you end up losing more than uh, th than you invested in. These are feedbacks. It shows you that you are laboring against a principality. You are laboring against the, the ruling princes that are in that land. But you don't give up. Apostle Paul kept pushing, and most of the students he raised in the school of Tyrannus became mighty men. So as an accurate intercessor, you must first seek to know the nature of the territory that you are laboring in. Know that your mandate will be resisted. Let me not lie to you. Your mandate as an intercessor and, and your calling, your ministry will be heavily resisted. As long as the devil sees that you carry light, you bear the anointing, the grace of God is upon you to make changes, to bring territorial impact you are going to be resisted. I want to challenge a young man listening to me, young lady listening to me. You are an intercessor. In fact, there's a sister listening to me. You are an intercessor. You pray in the night and it's as if things are turning haywire. Don't give up. Don't leave the territory. Don't separate your situation and circumstances from your ministry. Sometimes they go together. Don't leave and say, maybe God did not call me here. Majority of it is because you are facing attacks. So um, what do we do? Know that your mandate will be resisted in physic, by, by physical and spiritual forces. Hence, one can have an open door, but he can be terribly resisted. Please know that if you are going to be a territorial laborer. So what do you do? Number one, and that is one of the things I want to round off with. You have to understand a, a technology that I call territorial or spiritual mapping. One of the major ways an intercessor can achieve this is by a process we call territorial mapping. What is territorial mapping? It is a scriptural warfare strategy, which is intercessory in its usage. Now, um, let me bring um, a, 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 a perspective from the word of God for me to bring a clarity to this. When you read Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, you will see where Habakkuk says, I will stand upon my watch. I will set me upon the tower and will watch what to watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. It means that when you set up a watch, a watch, your work as a watchman, as a territorial um, 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 laborer, is to stand on your watch. And one of the usefulness of a tower, a watchtower, for every watchman is to see. So sight is a serious advantage for you as a territorial laborer. We need to have sight. If you must ask God for anything, ask him for spiritual sight in the territory you labor in. And I'm telling you, if you penetrate and, 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 and gain um, traction in this regard, your ministry will change because you will find ease, you will find access in your territory. Now, also, if you look at Numbers chapter 22, verse 41, um, when we're talking about Balaam and Balak, the Bible says it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. What does it mean? Despite the sacrifices that Balak made for Balaam, despite his huge gift, it was a gift that God even attested to. God had to resist a man, resist a prophet from prophesying. Despite all this, Balaam needed a spiritual positioning. 
he said, take me to the high places of Baal, and from thence I can see the utmost parts of Israel. He needed to see. So sight is an advantage. You can be gifted, you need sight. You can be anointed, you need sight. You can make sacrifices, you can pray all night, but you need to see. That's part of the feedback of prayer. That's part of the buoyancy that God will, will galvanize in your soul. You need to see. Mapping comes by sight. So, um, 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 Balaam can only prophesy and use his gift if he could see. And that's what we call mapping. Finally, I want to say something about mapping in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 14 to 17. You will hear uh, this was the case that David had with Uriah and wanted Uriah eliminated. And he gave the assignment to his general, his army general, Joab. And the Bible said that Joab was trying to find the best way to get rid of Uriah. And what he did was to look for the hottest, what the Bible calls in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 14 to 17, the forefront of the hottest battle. You can see that in verse 16. How did Joab, how can Joab find the forefront of the hottest battle? The Bible says he observed the city. You can go and read it on your own. So you see that general, soldiers, one of the key in them knowing the hot spots, knowing locations, knowing where there are satanic intensities, knowing where there are high degrees of attack and oppressions of darkness. Even sometimes you can be able to know how angelic functions happens in your territory. One way to know that is sensitivity. A sensitive person will design hot spots, just like Wi-Fi. What I'm, what I'm transmitting to you is actually on, on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi supplies internet um, ability for me to be able to broadcast. And once my phone or my iPad or my gadget is able to sense a Wi-Fi, it can actually stream. So you yourself as a, a prayer warrior, there's a sort of find a way to be able to see. So, so what we call mapping is a spiritual survey done over territory by, by, by secret disclosures received over time in diligent and extended labors of intercession over the land in secret place. Some are gotten through direct revelation. Some are gotten through visions and dreams. Some are gotten through angelic encounters and interventions. Some, of are, some are gotten through uh, 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 um, inner knowings. You get to a point where you sense the presence of, um, of angels, sense the presence of demonic activity in areas. It is a height. I, I was in, I was in Benin Republic um, for an apostolic invasion. And when I woke up in the morning to pray by 4 p.m. to prepare for the meeting, at exactly 5 a.m., a cat began to make some strange sound. It, it was actually a, 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 a three or four star hotel I was in. But the cat sound, I can assure you that majority of the people there did not hear it because that sound was a spiritual sound. So most of the times, if, you're, if, you're, if your frequency is heightened, you can be able to pick certain things in the spirit. So I began to pray and I knew it was an attack of the devil. I knew it was, I, I, I was sensing a demonic presence that I needed to deal with because I had a great meeting that day. So it is very important. So now we need to understand that. Now your city is crucial. Which city are you in? Which location are you in? I minister in a city called Were in Nemo State. And I can use that as an example for you so that we can be able to... How do you map cities? Now, I can, I can be able to tell you that um, um, cities can be mapped. So apart from inner knowings, you can also know. You can also uh, 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 um, decode, get disclosures through uh, um, diary and knowledge sharing. Intercession is not in isolation. That's why the Bible called it a hedge. If actually there are two accurate intercessors in a territory, they can be able to compare notes. You discover that because it is the same God doing the same oppression in an area, two of them might have one thing out of six or five or three, or even all their, their, their discernments might be linking to one particular thing. So you can compare notes with other intercessors. And you can say that's why when something happens, somebody will say, yes, I knew I was praying about it. Have you ever sensed that? Yeah, God also told me the same thing last week about this thing you talked about. That's because intercession is a linkage. Those that will make up the hedge. A hedge is made up by different aspects of, um, of, of unions and linkages. So, um, I, 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 I think we need to use a city as an example 
of mapping. I live in Oweri and I can be able to tell you that in my course of engagement, spiritual engagements there, I've been able to map the city and I can tell you the, 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 the mannerisms of the oppressions of darkness there and, and the heritages that God is latching on to be able to give us ventilation. We cannot be able to go there today, but I assure you there is a second part of this message and we will be able to use that city as an example so that you can be able to also um, map your own city. Regarding this message that will come in part two, I want the intercessors who are um, in the eastern hemisphere of this country to, to be alert and listen because there are things that God ministered to me. And I pray that you will come into a dimension where God can give you a capacity to take nations. The Bible say, ask of me nations, ask of me kingdoms. John Knox says, give me Scotland or I die. So in our next study, we'll look at that and we'll understand our territory, be prophetic and to fulfill the role and the calling that we have. The Lord will make you mighty. The Lord will make you stronger than your enemies in where you labor. Receive grace, receive anointing, receive power to do more. I am my children. The Bible says we are for signs and wonders. I pray that God's hand comes upon you to do great things. There is, there is no darkness that is not afraid of light. So as we move in the strength and in the power of God, light will be the outcome. Lord, I pray for as many listening to me, I ask that the anointing will come upon them. Grace will come upon them. Lord, they will move in the spirit and power of Elijah to do great things and damage to installations of darkness. Lord, they will not give up. They will not quit. We will not quit because we trust you. That when our king, the shout of a king is among us, we will not quit. More grace to you. More anointing, more favor. More doors to open to you. I see that land yielding to you. And I see doors opening. May the Lord bless you mightily. As I bring you the part two of this message, God sustain and keep you. And God bless you mightily. God's grace, my people, see you again. And God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for joining.